Well, welcome to the newsletter for week 13 of this legislative session. Today is actually April 8th. So today, uh, I just wanted to kind of give you a lowdown of what's going to be happening in the legislature. And, and our finance committee is probably the hot spot where stuff is, is really going forward. This coming Thursday and Friday, our finance committee in the Senate will be hearing from you, the public, about the operating budget. So public hearing will start at 9 a.m. and go to about 11 and then take up again on Thursday afternoon from 1 to about 5 p.m. And they're doing it by communities. And so let me just take a look here. On Thursday morning, they'll be hearing from Matt Sue and Fairbanks. Thursday afternoon, it looks like Juno, Nome, Bethel, Kotzebue, and Alaska. And at 2.45 on Thursday afternoon, they'll be hearing from Anchorage. So that's the time when you can go to the Legislative Information Office and, and get on the list and they will listen to public testimony from 2.45 <clears throat> to 4.45. Then on Friday, uh, again at nine o'clock, they'll be hearing from Kenai, Kodiak, Dillingham, Glen Allen, Seward, and Homer. And then on Friday afternoon, Ketchikan, Utkiavik, Wrangell, Delta Junction, Petersburg, Sitka, Valdez. Um, so all over the place. Um, it is critical that our committees hear from Alaskans, especially on the subject of the budget. So just flagging you on that, these, these times and dates are going to be written down in the newsletter so you can see them there. Uh, the Judiciary Committee is continuing to work on, on criminal justice bills, as is our State Affairs Committee. So today what I, I wanted to talk to you about is uh, the priorities that the Senate began this session with and where we are on those priorities. So our number one priority for the Senate, for the Senate majority, was crime. That was our top priority. Now it's interesting because I had uh, a couple public meetings in, at, back home in Anchorage and, and the subject of crime didn't come up. And yet, I see in the newspaper that we are on track to again have a record high um, year in homicides. Um, I'm hearing that car thefts are down and yet you and I know summer's coming on and I don't know about you but I'm going to be parking at trailheads, going on hikes, um, things like that. I am suspecting that probably car break-ins um, are going to perk up again with the summer. And of course I also monitor that, that um, cool um, I guess you'd call it an app, it's called Nextdoor. And I'm hearing about suspicious people in neighborhoods and burglaries, two houses down from somebody. I know crime is still going on. We are very much aware of that here in Juneau and we are not ignoring that. I just told you judiciary and state affairs committees are still hearing crime bills, absolutely. Um, some of the crime bills are offered by members of the Senate and some are governor's bills, but they are being heard, they're being worked on, and they are being moved to the Senate Finance Committee table. That's the last destination for a crime bill on the Senate side. Um, frankly, we're, we're waiting to see what the House is going to do. Um, we see that they're hearing some of the crime bills, but they're not moving them along. And so we are urging them, the public wants crime corrected. Uh, we want the, they want the penalties corrected. I've heard from you that you want the penalties stiffer. These are bills that will do that. So I just want you to know that we are working on that. The budget, of course, is a big deal. Um, interestingly, the House did not really reduce much from the budget, which raises the question, of course, of, of where the money will come from. Um, I saw an interesting summary on uh, the funding for the House bill. So $1.8 billion will come from oil revenue. Uh, $1 billion will come from the earnings on previous oil revenue. Another billion will come potentially from permanent fund dividends, which by the way are funded by oil revenue. And about $500 million will actually come from non-oil revenue. So my point in, in illustrating this is 80% of our budget 
is funded by oil revenue. There's a lot of discussion in the media and sometimes on talk radio shows that, well, why doesn't the legislature raise those taxes on the oil industry? Well, we could raise the taxes on the oil industry to 100% and it wouldn't fill the shortfall in our budget right now because our spending is simply out of proportion with the population of our state and the revenue potential of our state. Uh, we want to continue to receive that 80% from the oil industry. And so right now we have a very competitive tax regime. To change that, certainly we could. And there are some things that we actually need to adjust if gas starts being produced and we build a gas project. We're definitely going to have to make some adjustments. But right now, uh, that would not be prudent. I will tell you that there's a talking point out there that we're giving away billions of dollars to companies uh, in, in oil tax credits. The fact of the matter is that's not exactly true. We were giving away cash credits, billions of dollars, to, to large, uh, excuse me, to the small oil companies for many years under the previous tax structure. Those cash credits were, the purpose of them was to invite smaller companies up here. We were tired of having the big companies dominate the North Slope, BP, Conoco, Exxon. They were dominant up there. We wanted small companies coming in, so we offered cash credits. We also offered cash credits in Cook Inlet. Cook Inlet, where your natural gas comes from to heat homes and light your homes in South Central. We have removed those cash credits. They're gone. They're not there anymore. There is still debt from those cash credits. Last number I heard was around 700 million that's still owed to those companies. We're slowly paying those off and some of those cash credits can be sold to other tax, companies with other tax liability. And that's happening, which of course is reducing that debt also. But cash credits are gone. So I just wanted to, to make sure that, that you understood that. In terms of the budget, I'm still getting, of course, emails from all of you. Thank you so much for communicating. I get lots of emails from teachers that don't want any change in education funding. I certainly understand that. We want the dollars we appropriate here to get to those teachers' classrooms. The concern we have here in the legislature is that that money's getting hung up in administration. That's not what we intended. We want teachers in classrooms to have that money. Um, I'm also hearing from medical students who are very concerned about the reduction uh, in funding for medical education. We're concerned about that too. Uh, and these are things that the Senate is working on. The permanent fund dividend is another piece of the budget, though we, uh, the Senate majority, call it out as yet another priority. We want to preserve and protect the permanent fund itself and a dividend for Alaska's people, for the citizens of Alaska. We actually have two bills that were introduced last week. You will see them spoken about in the newsletter, further on in the newsletter. The purpose of these two bills is to create a balance between two laws. Uh, a couple years ago, we passed a bill called the percent of market value. Uh, this would create a, a um, spin-off of the earnings from the permanent fund itself that a percent of it could be used for government and a part of it could also be used for dividends, but it would protect the earnings and protect the fund itself. We're trying to mesh those two bills, or those two subjects. The permanent fund dividend formula was drafted 30 years ago. A lot has changed in that time. So we want to update those things. The other thing I hear a lot about from folks is, is the um, statement that they would be happy with a tax. They would be happy to have uh, taxes taken from their income. You know, in fact, Alaskans are paying taxes now. In fact, the latest number that I've seen is Alaskans 
it annually pay about $1.4 billion in taxes. These are local uh, taxes and also state taxes of various kinds. So that makes up about 3% of the total income of the state right now and about 23% of the income of local state governments. So we want to be careful that if we're going to institute a tax, that we're not overburdening people with jobs already or property owners who are already paying significant taxes. This all continues to be discussion in the Senate. Um, so read through the rest of the newsletter. There's lots of links there. You can actually listen to committee hearings yourself because we're providing you with those links and also see the paperwork that is presented, the, the information. Thanks so much for listening today and we'll see you again next week.